The legacy of Sudan's civil war lives on the fertile banks of the Ye River. This meandering Nile tributary bisects Mundri, a desolate southern town born of a trading center, an historic stronghold of the Sudan People's Liberation Army. Mundri saw intense fighting during the latter years of the war. In addition to pitched ground battles, the town endured frequent cluster munition strikes by the Sudan armed forces. While the bombing stopped in 2003, their tangible and potentially lethal remains lay scattered in fields along the river. Today, Teams of explosive ordnance disposal technicians are tasked with clearing unexploded submunitions from the riverbanks. While the job is painstaking and dangerous, it's an essential part of post-conflict normalization. The presence of these volatile items renders large swaths of land unusable. In agrarian communities like the one in Mundri, access to land and its bounty is essential. As more and more refugees and displaced persons return during this period of calm, the demand for access to land is growing. For Karilla Januba, the problem hits close to home. When she returned to Mundri in 2004, she found her family lands heavily contaminated with cluster submunitions. I am fearful to dig at all on this side of the land because there are so many bombs. For a while, we were finding them every day. I really only have this side to cultivate, which is not enough. Murjan James leads local clearance operations with support from the Danish Demining Group, an international mine action organization. Since beginning clearance operations in Mundri in October of 2009, his team of operators have uncovered and destroyed nearly 100 submunitions from a small area near the riverbank. After clearing this land, uh, we are sure uh, it may allow uh, Mundri people to continue with their agriculture activity and it will also allow them to move safely in this area. As EOD teams like the one in Mundri make progress clearing fields like this, the prospect of renewed civil war throughout southern Sudan threatens to undo all their efforts. Upcoming presidential elections, rising tides of tribal violence, and an independence referendum scheduled for 2011 are all viewed as potential flashpoints for a new war here. If fighting were to begin again, efforts of these EOD teams could be wiped out in minutes. People here are hopeful that that won't be the case. Pete Muller, Global Post, Mundri, Southern Sudan.